going on guys? Well today we're looking at this knife. This is made by a new company to me and I'm going to say that's pronounced Comoran but of course you can correct me if I am wrong. Comoran Tactical Steel. Pretty interesting. This is a gift by a uh, Instagram viewer which is greatly appreciated. I was not aware of this knife and this is kind of a big deal. And the reason this is a big deal is because this is a knife from Smoky Mountain Knife Works which is a great company. That's not why it's a big deal. There's a lot of knives from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. But uh, what makes it cool is that it is D2 for 20 bucks, $19.99. So we have a, uh, a tactical um, you know, folder here. Obviously you can see Tanto style blade with D2. And yes, in my opinion, this is genuine D2 steel. Performs very nicely. Um, this particular knife, is also available on uh, Amazon, but it's like $27. So I'm going to speak to this video as if you paid 20 from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Obviously Amazon is free shipping, which Smoky Mountain Knife Works doesn't, unless you get some kind of promotion or something. But regardless, I'm calling it the $20 D2 tactical folder. All right, so for 20 bucks, let's see what we get. We get a pouch, right? Nice little carry bag. And if I open the box, you can see that we also get a cloth. A beautiful little cleaning cloth with some stuff on it, right? And then we have our little paperwork here. Okay, it says authentic Comoran knife. So let's give it a quick read here. Legend has it in ancient Japan, the Comoran was revered as a fearsome bird of prey. Oh, okay, I guess I can look that animal up and get the right pronunciation, but anyway. Uh, its tenacity and courage were unsurpassed by its competitors. The Comoran stalked its prey swiftly and silently through the forests and fields, and its slender bill was strong, sharp, and deadly. The Comoran was fast and agile, sleek and silent, and it delivered its fatal blow by driving its hardened bill through its prey. Oof, I got chills. <laughs> The samurai viewed the Comoran as an omen of good luck and strength. Uh, before imminent war, the samurai looked for the Comoran because they believed it was a sign of certain victory and the absolute defeat of their enemy. Many etched the symbol of the Comoran into the blades of the swords, believed it would provide courage in battle, harden the blade like the bill of the Comoran, and deliver certain death to their enemies. This ancient Comoran knife was handmade and hand fitted using high quality material materials to honor the legend of the Comoran. It took several hundred steps to make, fit, and perfect this Comoran knife. Uh, may your days be filled with luck of the samurai who on their journey were lucky enough to find the Comoran along the way. Wow. Um, so after reading that, yeah, <laughs> much cooler. Uh, no, it's just it's it's wonderful, beautiful, you know, Japanese history. It, it really is something special. Not to make a uh, light of it, but uh, yeah, interesting. So that's where the name comes from. So onto the knife here. It is a uh, a flipper knife, um, liner lock. You can see a lock up here. No blade play in any direction, which is nice, and the blade is centered. Um, the one issue, though, right off the uh, bat here, when I got this knife. I naturally, when I'm you know pulling out of the pocket, naturally I am using the flipper like this, okay? And the reason I bring this up is because you can see the point on the flipper is actually digging into my finger. If you use the tip of your finger on this, obviously using it on the flat part of the flipper, very, very comfortable, right? Not as comfortable when I just naturally rest my whole fingertip on there and pull back because the tip is digging into my finger. Most uh, flipper designs, you can see the flat part here is angled slightly down. A lot of times, if, if there's a flat edge on top, it's kind of like that. It's kind of straight out. So what's happening when it's straight out is I'm using the tip of my finger on the point, and the point's not digging in. Or a lot of times they'll be angled so far down that your finger naturally lands on the flat part. But this is kind of in between. It's not straight, it's not really angled, it's just slightly angled. So. I have to just be conscious of using the tip of my finger so that it's comfortable. Otherwise, like I said, I mean, I'm just carrying the knife, whatever, pull it out of the pocket, and I just go like that, and it, the tip kind of, you know, jabs inside the finger. So it's a little uncomfortable in that respect. Um, as far as being uncomfortable, 
that's really the only downside to this being a little bit uh, you know on the cheaper side and just by design too not necessarily just the the cost of it but you can see this big cutout that's here on the back and the front I think that's a huge mistake number one on the back you can see how thin wait let me zoom in a little so I'll make sure this is nice and focused you can see how thin the G10 scales are in those areas so I naturally rest my thumb here I could feel these sharper edges and as I flip it over same thing as my finger wraps around I could feel these the thinner G10 so it ends up being uncomfortable so ergonomics not so good now something else I noticed is this is definitely uh, better suited for slightly smaller hands when my finger is butted up on the inside of the uh, finger trail here or the guard uh, my fingers naturally land like this and most times my pinky is being you know jabbed by the end here because it slopes back up so I have to kind of like snug my fingers up nice and tight when I get a grip on here for it to be comfortable like right there very very comfortable pick the knife up just naturally grip it you, you could see my you know my pinky is being jabbed by the corner of this uh, scale here okay so by design if you have huge hands like if you know from other videos other knives I've reviewed and you know you've had those knives uh, what I've talked about if you know you have bigger uh, hands than me this is definitely not going to be comfortable for you if you know you have smaller hands than me um, it'll probably be very very comfortable for you okay because the ergonomics should be there it's just with my larger hands and they're not huge by any means um, it's just with this particular knife it doesn't land where it really should uh, there is a little thumb wrap here in the back of the blade and some jimping. The jimping is, is not super aggressive at all. It's, um, you know, it's functional. You know, it's not very sharp, though. All right, so it does help a little bit. But, um, yeah, I mean, your hand's locked in. It's just naturally when I grip this knife, it, it's not comfortable. I have to purposely snug it up. So let's talk about this uh, pocket clip. I absolutely love the design of the pocket clip. Now, I like this design before I knew all about the Comoran right for the bird now I understand this is the beak this is the weapon of the Comoran okay which makes it that much cooler now uh, I liked it before because it was kind of a dagger look and it's different and I like things that are different however you can definitely see the machine marks I don't get such a glare here the lighting but you can see the machine marks in here cutting that out on the sides and stuff it is definitely not well finished but not a huge deal again we're talking a 20 dollar knife um, it does have good tension on here and because these scales the G10 is nice and smooth I had no problem taking it out of the pocket you can see it's only tipped down not reversible not swappable so that might be a deal breaker for a lot of you guys out there if you just can't do the uh, the tip down because I know tip up is definitely much preferred but uh, yeah pretty interesting like the pot clip quite a bit you can even see these screws kind of look like the eyes of the bird even though I don't know what it looks like I'm kind of getting a picture already <laughs> it's got a huge beak but anyway um, yeah, pretty interesting design. You can see a huge lanyard hole here from the, uh, the spacer sticking out. Common design on a lot of different knives is we have the undercut scales and the spacer is actually fulfilling the rest of the handle and becomes your lanyard spot. So that's nice. Um, as far as our blade goes here, some crazy grinds going on. Now on the front, hopefully you guys can see this. See, here's our swedge, right? Here's our main grind. Here's the the secondary grind, I guess, for the Tanto. But right there, let me get a different angle. See this line? Let me try to hold this. This line that comes across right there, that is where it was ground one angle and then changed again. That is just an error. If we flip it over, it is not on the other side. So this other side is a nice, clean grind. And on the front end, there's just a little bit of a boo-boo. Little oops. Not a huge deal, but definitely something that stood out right away when I looked at the knife all right as far as uh, our markings you can see there's the model number K actually on here it looks like KO like the letter O and then the number 017 so see how the, the O's are different so KO 017 so yeah interesting a lot of these Chinese knives that just have different they don't necessarily have names for their knives like we uh, have in a lot of American companies. They're just different model numbers. So overall, I mean, it's definitely not the most comfortable knife in the world. Um, you know, the grind's off a little bit on the one side, the machine marks on the pocket clip, the sharp, you know, G10 on the edges. I mean, again, that's just by design. It's not because it's unfinished or anything. 
you know, eh, I, those things to me can be overlooked just because of the fact that it's 20 bucks and you're getting D2 and a bearing system. You're getting a good lockup, you know? Those are the things that matter to me. You know, that's the actual performance of the knife. Yeah, no, it's definitely not the most comfortable though. So uh, if you get this thing and you're like, man, I don't like using this. Well, that's a huge consideration. It'll perform for you if you can get over these little, you know, design flaws. I, I say flaws loosely because they're flaws to me, but the things that I don't like about it may not bother you. But uh, overall, it is kind of a hidden gem. I posted a little teaser picture of this on Instagram and I got some messages from people saying they never saw it before. They're really interested. Looking forward to the review. So, uh, so here it is. I mean, I like it. Uh, the little, the paperwork here, I don't think I've ever read the literature that came with a knife and was more convinced that it's a cool knife after the fact, except for this. This, this actually reading this was pretty cool. Almost gave me chills. Uh, and it, again, a very interesting learning about a, uh, a new bird that I did not know existed before. I recently did a uh, review on the CRKT civet and then, and then learned what a civet was. So, you know, just by knife collector, you can get pretty, uh, pretty knowledgeable about different animals. But uh, anyway, yeah, the, uh, the Comran, pretty interesting knife. Let me know down below if you have one, especially want to hear about the ergonomics. You know, if you have this thing, let me know if, you know, what size glove you wear. Do you have small hands, medium, large, extra large? Uh, was it comfortable for you? Was it uncomfortable? I'd like to, i like to know those things. But for me, it's just the comfort level. It's not really there. It's not something I would use over and over again because it is that uncomfortable. You know, I have to say, guys, I am extremely torn on this knife. And what I mean by that is I love the knife, but I don't know if I want to recommend it just because of the ergonomic issues. It's uncomfortable enough that it's really just noticeable. When I'm carrying, and not carrying it, but when I'm using the knife, it's just uncomfortable, you know? So I don't want to recommend it to other people and have them have an uncomfortable knife. That being said, it's offering a lot. And the comfort issue is definitely a personal thing. Uh, it, it has to do with my hand size and also has to do with other factors like the fact that I use so many different knives. If you put this in a group of five knives, it's not that uncomfortable. You put it in a group of 500 knives, all of a sudden it's really not comfortable because you have the variety of a lot more comfortable knives. Now I will say for the $20 range, um, the performance on D2 is great, it's fantastic. You're not going to get D2 in a lot of $20 knives. Yes, it's available other places too, but it's very rare. Um, so for that, that fact alone, if you're in a budget of $20 for a knife, you may want to check it out anyway. But uh, just heed my warning that I don't find this to be a very comfortable knife. That's all. That's pretty much what it comes down to is I want to recommend it, but I don't just because of the ergo issues for me. But 9 out of 10 people may pick this knife up and say, what are you talking about? It's fine. I just have a lot of different knives to compare it to. That's pretty much it. If you're someone out there that you got 25 bucks to spend on a knife and you're like, I don't know what to get, this may be on your radar. You know, it may be an option for you. Um, if you've owned 500 knives before, this may not be your option because you have such a, a diverse experience with different types of knives and, and different ergos. You may pick this up and go, yeah, out of the 500 knives I've had, this is not, you know, very comfortable. So I don't know, I mean, your perspective does definitely change with your experience. But uh, like I said, I mean, there's enough discomfort for me to just go, eh, you know, there's, there's other options. And then of course the other issue obviously is the, uh, the flipper. I just naturally wanna put my finger right there and there's enough, it, you know, the um, detent is strong enough that it takes a lot of pressure. And because I have to use a lot of pressure like that, it just becomes uncomfortable. I have to purposely land the tip of my finger on there to uh to get that out without any, any kind of discomfort so you know it is what it is uh i want to like it i love the story absolutely love the story uh, i like the design i think it's it's a cool looking knife love the pocket clip love the way it looks in the pocket as well it's just different and unique so uh you guys let me know let me know if you end up getting one come back to this video and uh let me know what you thought of it you know ergonomics specifically but that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Take care.